I would think that everything that we did in the last 50 years, we should continue doing that, which means continue to advocate for the rights of multilingual students in your districts and communities and in your states. Um, we need to have um, divisions of multilingual education and departments of education. But I think it's important that we extend that beyond just looking at schools. I think that looking at Lao and language rights only from the lens of schools is hugely problematic. Um, that is also a fault line within Brown versus Board of Education that we only looked at what was happening in schools. And so our reliance on schools being the primary engineers of policy, educational policy, in this case, educational slash language policy, when they are the only engineers, they problematically reproduce what they're trying to remediate. So um, it's a really tricky trope. And so what I learned in my study, which I'll talk about later, is that people weren't just working in the schools for language rights. They were working in community centers around language rights, looked working in voting rights around language rights, working for language rights within uh, proper employment or underemployment and addressing those issues. So we can't just look at the schools, we have to look at the health sector. We have to look at the food sector, the availability of food. We have to look at schools, but we need to look at governments. We need to look at policy places like New America. Um, we need to be looking um, at systems for voting, including bilingual ballots, how boundaries are drawn for voting um, constituencies. All of that needs to include language rights. And if we are solely looking at the site of the school, we are gonna be sorely disappointed. And in 50 years, we're gonna be talking about the same thing, saying Lao has largely been unfulfilled.